Morning, everybody. How are you today? Wow, we have a lot of people here today. Nancy, Dawn, Moises, Kat is here, Dana is here, Annie, Ileana. Very cool. We have a lot of people here today. Whoa, I'm just kind of scrolling up all the way back up to the top, posting anything. Aesthetic Pammy, awesome. A lot of names here. Sandy, welcome. Colby, Phoenix, welcome. Glad to see you on that uh, Zoom class this week. That was a lot of fun. Posting anything. Yeah, there's a lot of names I can't pronounce. You don't want me to try to pronounce all those names. Let me make sure that I don't get my hair in that, that video. So today's class is going to be all about um, you know, just having some fun with this little statuette. This is a statue that I photographed at. Oh, let me scroll all the way down to the most recent comments. Oh, my God, this is nuts. Um, Paul, welcome. How you doing, Paul? Hope all is well with you. Doug, welcome. Benedict, if I missed your name, I apologize. Marie and Michelle. Uh, so Aurora, welcome. Aurora, you're not sick of me yet. You see me all the time now, twice a week. <laughs> um, Ellie. Okay. Very cool. Welcome. Welcome everybody. Um, okay. So you're having a hard time. So Kat, listen, um, something's not right with my personal zoom. My school zoom is working great in terms of scheduled meetings. So you have to check your email, um, after the meeting. So if the meeting starts at like four and there's an issue, I send it another email out like five minutes later with another new link. Hey, David. Um, Aura, welcome. Aura on the live stream. You're not sick of me yet. Uh, you've been seeing me here twice a week. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Alex, now listen, let me get started. Welcome to everybody here. Let me explain what we're doing. So once again, uh, today's live stream is about this little statuette. Now this statuette comes from, um, let me make sure that I'm in this video so I'm not getting cropped here. This statuette is at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's this little thing in like a glass showcase. Uh, I think it's in the American wing. Um, I don't think it's in a glass showcase because if it was, I actually would see glass reflections in front of it. So I just think that this is a statue that's on display. And sometimes I'll go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and I will um, you know, just photograph stuff to kind of give me ideas. That's where I, I, I really love going there. I haven't been there in a very long time. And uh, I get a lot of ideas. So drawing statues, um, yeah, don't sweat it, Marie. Drawing statues is this thing that we do where it usually comes out very stiff. I know I've done that because you're drawing a marble statue. I don't know what this statue is actually made out of. It's definitely not made out of marble. Um, but yeah, I think it, it could just, I, I'm not even going to guess. I'm not a sculptor and I, I don't want to embarrass myself by saying the, the wrong thing. So today's going to be really, really simple, actually. Uh, we're just going to use our traditional Strathmore drawing paper, 80 pound cheap paper, and we're going to use this uh, cola erase pencil. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. There is a delay with my voice. Okay, so ha 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 before I get started drawing, how's, the, how's everything here with the... Uh, with the sound and, and the video quality, because I, I upped the video quality just a, a touch here. Is, um, yeah, that would be really, really fun. Um, how, how's my voice sounding? Is there a delay? Is the video here okay before I get started drawing? Hey, Ace, welcome. Just waiting for that comment to come in. No delay for me, David M. No delay. Okay, good. Okay, no delay. Thank you. Okay, got three. We're good. So let's get started here. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, because I just upped the streaming quality. I, I The streaming quality is like horrible. Uh, the last couple videos, I, I didn't like it, so I upped it a little bit. So it's like this little catch-22. If the streaming quality is too high, you run the risk of buffering. And if it's too low, then, you know, you've got a crappy looking live stream. All right. So let's get started here. Uh, now, uh, what I like to do, I have, I'm getting a little smarter here in my old age. I'm um, using these little scrap pieces of paper to kind of just demonstrate. So once again, let me sharpen this pencil. So when I first sharpen my pencil, it's sharp. And when you draw with it being that sharp, what happens is you get that stiff line. 
okay? So it's really stiff. So what I like to do is um, just take the edge off of that point. Now I've got to keep my hand in the same spot because I've got that little flat part of the point um, that's really beneficial for me. And that's how I can get that really soft line. Okay, with all that being said, I chose this statue just because it was there and I like it and I've always wanted to draw it. But this one helps with the looseness quality. So what you want to do immediately here is, let me just make sure that I'm in this screen. One second. Okay, that's better. Is just line of action. Okay, so I'm going to start right at the shoulder. Now I drew this out so the camera had something to focus on. I'm not trying to cheat or anything like that. So this is our big long line of action all the way down. And I'm going to go all the way down to the top of the foot. So that that's the whole pose lives on that, okay? So then what I like to do is wrap around the shoulders, okay? We're going to cling on to something in the interior. We're gonna cling on to that belt, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the other side of her body. And we're gonna come on down her other leg and we're just drawing her legs together. So what I'm doing here, I, I'm outlining, okay? When we do the opposite seas, I don't have those drawings near me. I should have grabbed them before we started. Um, when we, uh, just looking at some comments here. Um, welcome, Karen. Um, Alex, welcome. So when we um, outline, things tend to get stiff, all right? But uh, immediately, they're not stiff. Why are they not stiff? Why is this thing all of a sudden loose? Um, it's loose because of the gesture of the pose of the statue. It's loose because we're drawn with a big, long line of action first. That is what? It's an S-curve. It's not straight. So, so far in this little like sketch that I've done, there's no straight lines whatsoever. Okay, And that's what you want to understand about uh, what makes a stiff drawn and what makes a loose drawn. Uh, what makes a loose drawn is something that has S-curves. So when we come on down this side, I'm not worried about all the folds of the fabric just yet. I want to cruise into that foot. I'm going to scribble in this foot over here because that's, that's going to be a landmark for me. And then her heel here is just going to be a little bit looser. Not her heel, her ankle. I'm sorry. All right, so we've got that in. Now let's just kind of not get stuck. So now I, I need to hold my pencil straight. So you see how my arm is straight like this? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, and my pencil is kind of going like that. Uh, you want to say, what is right up above from that heel? Or I said heel again, it's her ankle. So that's the side of her head. So I'm just looking, this is over a little bit to the left, but I, I'm not worried about uber accuracy. Let's just go straight up, and that's going to be a little bit. So I'm going to move her head over. Now, in this statue, she's got a tiny, tiny little face. You see that? So I'm just going to move it over because that's going to help with the gesture. So immediately, I just kind of get a little target here. And um, Frankie J, welcome from Wheeling, West Virginia. Um, I'm going to do this and okay, so that's my top to bottom pose. Now is mine a little bit exaggerated? Yes. Could I bring the hip in? Sure, I could. I could move this over to the right. But quite frankly, I really don't want to start doing tweaks to measurements at this early stage. I should just kind of draw and not worry about the perfection thing. So let's try that. So now let's just kind of move the pencil around the page a little bit faster. So we're going to come on in here and we're going to get this kind of really cool fold of fabric. And I'm dealing with primitive shapes right now. I want to put a shape in. Let's just put a shape in. You don't have to draw just with line. You could put in some really soft tone. I know you prefer the black hole erase pencils. Have you ever tried the Conte? No, I haven't. I've tried it in class. Um, maybe I would use it for like a gesture drawing in class where I'm just kind of mucking around. But in terms of um, this, it's... You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in just becoming one with your materials, whether you're a digital painter on Procreate. What the heck? Whether you're a di digital painter on Procreate or you're an oil painter or you work with acrylics or you work with graphite. I, I'm a big believer in becoming one with your materials. So I guess I've been working with the color race pencil for so many years. I'm definitely one with the color race pencil. And sure, I can experiment a little bit. I did that on a couple weeks ago where we were just mucking around 
with doing the three value study with a pen and then graphite. But this is my thing, this pencil, and I don't want to switch it up just yet. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm um, not outlining. I'm blocking in tone. We did that a little bit last week with that really overly soft painting. Um, and I just want to do a little bit that of that over here. Now, the title of this uh, video on YouTube is How to Draw a Statue with Flow. I titled it. I should know. So sometimes what you want to do is don't draw all the little details, but actually put in a shape of value. So I'm not, you see how I'm not drawing her arm? I'm looking at the negative space between her arm and her body. Okay. And I'm just shading her arm. I'm shading the fabric on the side of the chest. I'm shading over here. And now what I can do is I can very quickly shade the wing. So this is just like blocking in as if you're painting. Okay, so we're just gonna block that in. Okay, and now I can go back to line. So now I'm gonna come over here. Now I'm gonna look at, uh, sometimes we can gesture things and connect with, we when we do portraits, oh, come on camera, don't muck with me now. When we do portraits, we um, connect eyelashes. Okay, so I'm gonna connect, I hope that doesn't go in and out all day, that's gonna be really, annoying for you and for me. Uh, okay, so yeah, see how I'm connecting this fabric to this fabric with a gesture line? Okay, and now I'm just gonna suggest where that hand is. So maybe, maybe, maybe I need to lower that shoulder a touch because her chest is really, really um, short from this belt to, so I, I'm already drawing her upper body from the bottom of the breast to the top of her uh, neck area a little bit too tall. Can you define blocking in? So blocking in is where, um, one second, one second. Okay, so this is, these are values. And um, you block in with different values, okay? And you block in, uh, when you block in, let me grab something here. One second, I'm almost there for you. Uh, these are the wrong brushes. Uh, Let's grab these old. So when you block in, you use a big brush. So you block in one value, okay? That's, that's putting paint down on the canvas. So you put the paint down on the canvas, you block it in, and then you start to um, manipulate the paint in order to model it, okay? Bharat India. Thank you so much, Santish. Sir, my man, welcome. So that's blocking in. I, I hope, um, yeah, I know the live videos have something to them that a uh, recorded video does not. I get it. Uh, now that I've done the live streams, I, I kind of understand that. So we're gonna, let's drop this wing. It's too tall. And let's come on down. Um, now I'm dealing with an angle and I'm looking at, so when I draw this line, here, I don't really look at that line. I look here. So I'm trying to get the distance between those two. That's how I start to get a likeness. Now, once again, we could gesture. I still think from here to here is too tall, but I'm gonna just keep going. So a little bit of an angle here. Now let's go over to the other wing and the other wing is equal with her eyebrows in terms of going across from. So we gesture and let's go to that other wing. So let's go across like that. Okay, and now let's just gesture. And don't worry about perfection because this is how we're gonna be nice and loose. So you can see over here, I have a target for her hand. So I'm just gonna be, I, I don't wanna deal with this arm right now because uh, if I deal with that arm right now, I'm gonna smudge everything. So let's just suggest it. Okay, so um, arm, let's bring it in a little bit and we can look at multiple things here. So we can look at the negative space between here and the inside of her forearm. That's too short. So I think my original line was pretty good. She does have a very long arm. And then we could bring the wing out just a touch because it does come out quite a bit. So that that's my first go through, okay? And I don't hate it. I, I still feel as though we're a little too high. So maybe now I'm gonna resharpen my pencil. One second. Um, let me just move something, one second. Got my iPad here, I wanna move it because I usually, it's on the extension cord of my sharpener. 
Good. Okay. So now I'm going to hold my pencil this way. Just because I woke up today with a little bit of a shaky hand, uh, I don't understand why that happens. It seems like every um, Saturday I wake up with this shakiness. It's probably because I'm on the computer all day um, on Friday teaching a four-hour class and then doing stuff on the computer after. I was trying to figure out how to do different scenes in Zoom, so I definitely was on the computer way too long. And when I'm on the computer way too long, it just screws my body up. Uh, in terms of posture and all that. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm just blocking in um, that shape on the side of our hair. And I want to look at the distance between her hair and the wing. So the wing starts closer to the hair. Cool. Let's just block in. And her neck is all in shadow. It's casting a shadow on her breast. And uh, now this whole piece of fabric is also in shadow. Now all of everything that I'm doing here is so, so very light. Uh, this is just shadow and that shadow. So we're just gonna suggest, we don't, not worry too concerned. Hello, Laszlo, welcome. Yeah, I got the shakes, got the shakes. I shouldn't, I shouldn't even say that quite frankly because then I jinx myself, so. All right, let's keep going here. Um, now, we've got a little tone over here. Little tone. Squint. I'm using a really... Now, last week I had promised somebody, I forgot who, and I apologize, that I was going to do something with Anders Zorn. And I, I went and I researched and I did... I love Anders Zorn and I looked at a bunch of his paintings and I looked at a bunch of his etchings and his... Paintings are really loose, and his etchings, the detail is insane. So I'm like, you know what? This isn't going to work for like a one-hour live stream. Um, so that would be more of like a, a, a course slash lesson thing. I think I already have a, a, a master class on Anders Orn on the website. So before I forget, I got to be like a real YouTuber here. If you like what you see so far, please subscribe. Uh, I can't believe I'm doing the YouTube thing. If you like what you see, give the video a thumbs up. If you want to learn more about what I do, you can check on the show more part underneath the video and you can check out some stuff that I have to offer, okay? But it would be really, really cool if you liked the video. That would help a lot. Okay, so now that's the pose, okay? Now it's up to you uh, to make a stick to beer. Yeah, the hard stuff will do that. I love Jameson, so I haven't been really drinking it. What would be the best approach for portrait drawing as a total beginner who just knows? Okay, so listen, here's my um, here's my suggestion for a beginner portrait drawing. And Paul knows this because Paul was a coaching student uh, for many, many months. And Paul worked with me. And Paul, what would you say is the most important thing for a portrait drawing in terms of the fundamentals? It's the photo reference. Making sure that you're working from high quality photo reference that has good light and shade. Right, Paul? Um, absolutely. So that's what I would say. Like I'm, I'm working from this statue photo and the Photo is great, not because I took it, but because the Metropolitan Museum of Art lit the statue, so it actually has light and shade. And that is something that I think is, is really, really um, important for portrait drawing. Okay. All right, cool. All right, thank you so much for the thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. Now, now at, at this point in the game, you could say, all right, let's start to put in some detail here. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to come on down. So there's a, a cast shadow on the side of the breast. And then that cast shadow from that fabric on the garment she's wearing comes down. And there's a nice sharp edge over here. This is pretty dark. Okay, so now I'm going to cruise on in and let's just refine this hip area a little bit and really juts out okay so now I'm just starting to press down a little bit harder so I, I'm I have to be a little bit more aggressive with this because it's a one hour live stream and I want to try to finish a little bit faster for you from the Czech Republic Prague wow 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I hate to do this to you guys, but this will be my last live stream of 220. I'm going to not do a live stream next Saturday, the day after Christmas, because it's just going to be chaotic in my home. And we'll pick up the live streams um, uh, January uh, the first, I think it might be January 2nd. I, I don't even know. Um, we'll, we'll pick up the live streams once again then. Okay, so I'll just take one week off uh, day after Christmas from um, doing this. I, I need to regroup. Uh, we're doing a new thing on drawingtutorialsonline.com. We are doing live Zoom classes every single Monday with a model, a live model. Um, we're going to have uh, females and males, and it's going to be really cool. And I'm working on um, new things with Zoom to not make it so boring. I draw with the model. Uh, there's a lot of cool things that, uh, that we're going to be doing with that. So I, I just need to take a little bit of time to plan out because that's going to be more of a structured course. When I do these live streams on YouTube, it's just like a one-off thing like, oh, let's draw a statue. Um, but the Zoom classes are going to be more of a structured course. So like one month we'll do portrait drawing. One month we'll do figure drawing. Um, you know, so it's going to be a little, yeah, not a little more structured, a lot more structured. So I just need some time to kind of plan all that out. I like to do planning um, in between Christmas and um, New Year's that week. I like to take that week off and just plan a little bit. I've also got to write a course description for a course at the School of Visual Arts on perspective drawing. Um, that's going to run definitely. So there's a lot that I need to do. So I'm going to just take that one. Ah, Magdalena. I'm an aspiring comic book artist, bit, but I struggle with cross-hatching as shading method. Any advice, please? Okay, so I'm not a big fan of cross-hatching, uh, but I guess for comics, it, it's important. And I, I'm a big believer in you should check out the line work of this artist, um, Muka. Okay, check out Alphonse Maria Muka. And check out Zorn etchings. Okay. And um, those two, you want to follow the way they do line. Especially Muka drawings. The way that he does line is amazing. Okay. So that's what that's what I would recommend. I, I don't really do cross hatching. So now over here, we're going to go a little bit lighter with the fabric lines. Okay. So the lines are going to be very light. I'm, I'm working in a very stylized way here. Uh, this would take me literally like hours to render out. Pay attention to your edges. Okay, so I'm just going to, now that we have this uh, little negative space over here with this fabric, I'm being very stylized uh, just because we only have an hour here today in the live stream. So I want to be a little loose. Now we've got this foot. Um, you got it, Magdalena. Groose is good for hatching. Yeah, check out... Um, John Baptiste Gruce. So if you go to Google and you type in Gruce drawings, you're going to be amazed. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. Uh, the Zoom class is for your school work, or um, the Zoom class is for the School of Visual Arts, the college that I teach at. But I also, for members of DrawingTutorialsOnline.com, I do a Zoom class. It's new. We just started it, but it's something I'm going to do every single Tuesday. Um, so I don't do that here on YouTube. This is my free content on YouTube, the stream. Philippe, welcome. Thank you, Phoenix, for that. Be the artist. Welcome to the live stream, Magana Sony. Welcome. Um, so now let's let's keep going. So let me let me. Um, so we have this fabric that goes covers the chest, and it's a little bit lower. It should be light. I should not have done that dark line over there. So then we come down. Okay, very light. We have the underplane shadow of the breast. Uh, this fabric comes down and then wraps over here. Now, at this point in the game, I need to make a decision. Do I use the brush or do I not use the brush? I don't know if I want to use the brush today. Let's lower the trapezius. Let's lower the deltoid. Let's not have a straight line at the bicep. She's got pretty thick arms. She looks very strong. Uh, there, oh, there's a negative space over here. I didn't even see that. Ah, this arm needs to be wider. 
So don't worry about making mistakes. I haven't used the eraser yet. Uh, just kind of have fun with it. Just scribble. So now this is going to wrap around. Okay. So let's let's let me just look at some of these comments. I understand. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mohammed. All right, Paul. Cool, man. Okay, so let's come up now to look at the negative space between the wing. You you want to find some really good photo reference? Go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher. They have a collection. I'm gonna butcher the name. Um, Helen Brune collection, and if you go through there, some of them are are uh, copyrighted, but some are not. And some of the Met photos, you know, I, I don't understand how they can copyright a piece of art because how copyright works is the artist, um, the copyright goes into the public domain after 70 years past the artist's death, and then it's pretty much in the public domain. So everything that I've done, when I die 70 years later, anybody can like do whatever they want with it. So I just don't understand when the Met claims that this piece is copyrighted when it um, the artist died like 300 years ago or something like that. Uh, it's strange to me, but I guess that's a, that's a whole other topic that would be raging here on YouTube. Okay, so we've got a little suggestion of our head. Let's just map in the eyebrows. Gesture those eyebrows. Her forehead is a triangle. Okay, let's get the eye socket. And her head's way too big. Way, 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 way too big. So let's break out the eraser. Fundamental art. Welcome, Camilla. Welcome. She eats chicken strong. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Okay. Truffs is snoring. So, hi, Joyce. Welcome. Okay. So, let's see. I need to take my time with this. I'm going way too fast. I'm not studying it enough. And her hair is lower. Let's angle that. Angle this, angle that. Let's drop the hair. Let's drop the eyebrows. Let's put in the eye socket. Looks like a mess right now, doesn't it? Now let's suggest the bottom of the nose. Let's suggest the other eye socket. Okay, so we're this is our block in stage. Okay, this trapezius is higher than this one. Let's just use a nice dark value over here. So I noticed that when I draw on YouTube, I draw like a painter just because it's fast. Okay, and um, I usually draw a little bit more with line um, when I'm not on YouTube because it's slower. Let's just clean this mess up. And where's my big brush? Big brush. So I'm going to soften everything with this brush. Get rid of those eraser crumbs. Just knock it all down. Push the pencil into the paper. Okay, where are we with comments? I think that has to do with the owners of the copyright, for the example, which companies own the work of art. Your drawing is curved. Yes. Yeah. I see. I got gotcha. it's you. The, it's the photo. Um, not the art. Okay, so now this should be a lighter line. I'm going a little too dark with that. And let's start over again now. So I'm going to, how's this eraser? Some of these erasers don't really work well. Let's do this. Let's not use that. Let's use this. A little mono zero. Should have used the mono zero up top over here. So cheekbone light. Good. Okay. 
So let's keep going now. So when you're struggling, you go to a place. Wow, comments are coming in fast. It's nice and flowy. That's a word. Hmm, Sun Lee. I use an iPad. I use a paid site for artists, figure it reference. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of them out there. Yeah, you need to learn how to see. And uh, that's, so my, I, I preach my philosophy of you need to draw from life. You need to draw from photos and you need to draw from your imagination on a weekly basis. And uh, it's really important that you do all three. If you just do one, you're not going to learn as fast. So let's say you just draw out of your imagination all the time. Well, then you're not filling your brain up with visuals. Um, you need to fill your brain up with visuals. Uh, I call it your visual vocabulary. And if you just draw from your imagination, you're not feeding your brain. Like you got to feed your brain things to draw and how do you do that? Well, you draw from life or you draw from photos. Uh, ultimately, drawing from life is the best way to draw, but it's also the least practical, especially when you're trying to draw models. So that's where photos come in. Photos are just a practical thing. It's like a necessary evil. Um, you know, photos are flat, but you try to pick a photo like this one that's not so flat uh, because it has good light and shade. Okay, let me just look at some of these. Thank you, Milky. Yeah, I, I don't, um, so I'm at a, a, a 45 degree angle, okay? So what you wanna do is switch up your posture throughout the day. Let me resharpen. So if you just stay in the same position all day by using one of those easels, a plain air easel, your shoulder's gonna explode. Um, so you, you have to, like all of my weight of my arm is on my hand. And uh, I, I don't wanna hold my arm up all day. My shoulder would be screaming at me. Uh, so what I used to do when I was forced to work all day because of deadlines is I would change my position up at least three times a day. So part of the day I would stand, part of the day I would sit. Um, I would do all different postures. And right now, I just like to draw. Let's move this over to the right even more so. I like to draw at a 45 degree angle. I feel it's um, the easiest on my body. Okay, that head is terrible. I got to work on that head. But let me just have some fun here with some of this fabric. So now what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to look at this shadow shape. So shadow shape, shadow shape, cast shadow. Is there a particular drawing or sketch in pencil or pen to use? You just have to, until you find one that works for you, you just have to experiment. But the problem with a lot of people is they experiment for way too long. So they see one teacher on YouTube using this art supply, so they go buy that art supply. And then they don't give it time to blossom, they don't get used to that art supply. So then they see another teacher on YouTube who's using a different art supply, and then they go buy those art supplies. So then you're on the rabbit uh, hamster wheel of constantly buying different art supplies. So there's a time and a place for that. And when you're learning, let's say you're going to college and college is, is four years, I would say the first two years need to be devoted to experimentation. Uh, third year, a little bit less experimentation, more mastery. And then fourth year, you really just need to pick a material and stick with it and begin the process of mastering that material. So the answer is, you know, I always say this little quote here from my doctor. Um, you know, I, I said, well, what's the best pillow? Because I have a bad neck. And he, he's like, there is, the best pillow is the pillow that works best for your neck in terms of when you use that pillow, it doesn't give you pain. So one pillow could give that person's neck pain and the other pillow, um, same pillow might, might not. So the answer to what is the best pencil is you have to experiment and see which pencil allows you to get the best results time and time again. That's the best pencil. So for me, the best pencil is the Colorace because it allows me to get the best results time and time again. Maybe not today here. 
So this is this is actually um, going to take me a long time. There's a lot of detail on this little statue. Really, a lot of detail. Whoa, more than I thought. So I'm going to be a little bit more scribbly with it. Let me resharpen and look at these. So use a, a large piece of foam core to lean your pad against a computer desk. That's perfect. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing. It just so happens my foam board is um, the Cintiq. So yeah, that's that's the best thing that you can do. Okay, so let's um, just do some continuous line with this wing. And that wing comes up. Let's look at the negative space. So shoulder with an angle. Wing is higher than that wing. This should be a broken line. I'm going to keep that part of the drawing a little bit nondescript. And uh, I'm going to go back now and just make this all one value over here. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab a brush, a small brush. Bear with me here. I got tape on everything, blue tape. And let's push. And let's take the edge off of everything here. So now I'm drawing like a painter again. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's YouTube and I need to get this done quickly. And using the brush helps me to draw faster. Okay. Um, that's all it does is it enables me to get solid tone in um, much, much faster than if I was going to sit here forever and just shade with my pencil and build up. God, Truffs, you're really snoring. Truffs, hey, Truffs. <laughs> She's snoring, and hopefully you can't hear her. So just making everything soft, making everything soft, because this is just a layer. We'll come back, and we'll pull out soft, soft, soft. Even over here, just lose the edge. Okay, so now let me just try to draw this with the eraser. So I'm, I'm really being a monster with this. Okay, so this hair comes in. I'm just uh, not looking at the comments here for a, a couple seconds so I can get this for you guys. And uh, this wing, I don't want it to have an edge. And this face, I need to put the shadow of the hair there. And let's get rid of some of those lines. And her hair. And lower the eyes because she has a very small f um, face. This side of the cheekbone. That's a little bit better. Her chin's catching a little bit of light. Okay, now let's use the big brush. Get rid of those eraser crumbs. That helped a little. Let me just glance at these comments. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, that's a cool idea. All right, so let's try to get this. Now, what we're going to do is go and look at this angle. Angle. Angle, shadow, shadow shape, forehead, shadow shape, shadow shape, this little thing on the front of her hair, it looks like a bow. Now her hair kind of goes like that. It goes like that. It comes around. And that eye socket needs to be lower, and her eye sockets are closer together. Got to be very concerned about the tilt of the eyebrows, because we can make her look worried or frightened with the wrong tilt of the eyebrow. Now let's get the underplane of the nose. And from the nose down, it's all kind of shadow, except a little light on her chin. Let's just suggest the bottom of her chin. It's not really the most flattering when there's all that shadow on a female 
above the mouth tends to look a little bit like a mustache. So we're just dealing with eye sockets. And let's get this part of her hair coming out. Now there should be no outline on the top. Should be very, very light. And let's get this bow shape a little bit more. So this is a shadow, that bow on the front of her hair. And where are we now? So we can get a little bit of the mouth. And let's knock that down. with the brush. Let's get rid of that dark on the mouth. So it's really small. So I'm barely putting any pressure. So just let's pull out and let's get rid of the light on this side. Just pushing the pencil into the paper because I'm trying to get a solid shape. And we're going to leave that for now, okay, because I don't want to get trapped there. But let me just soften some edges. And let's just get this. Uh, so sometimes the drawing fights you, and you got to work for it. So I'm working for it right now. And the neck. Ah, I see. So this shoulder. And let me erase out. Bear with me. This is taking forever. God. Sometimes you get it on the first couple strokes, and sometimes you don't. I see. That comes down over here. A little lighter over here. I'm not looking at the comments right now. I apologize. I'm just kind of looking at my drawing, trying to get this for you all. And this shoulder, we're going to lower that. Um, this negative space. Side of that neck. And a little bit of the breast. So I have a lot of smudged pencil, so I can draw just a little bit with my eraser. I just want to try to get that chin. That helped a little bit. Now let me go back to the big brush. And let me go back to... I'm going to use something different for y'all. Let's use a little bit of a blend in stump because we are working in a small little area here. So I think a blend in stump is kind of appropriate. So I just want to make this all one shape. And this is another way for you to loosen up your artwork by um, making things a shape. Just like that. And it's, oh God, it's way too soft. It's very much like how I drew last week, but this is how I can do this fast for you. Okay, I if I'm gonna do that with just line, it's gonna take me forever. So now we're just coming on down and um, I'm pushing the pencil into the paper. Let's use the blend in stump and just be a little bit more aggressive just for the sake of speed. So this is just making everything faster for me. I don't like drawing with the blend in stump at all, but you can see now that I have a lot of residual on the blend in stump. So I'm gonna just keep pushing it here and try to be a little bit faster. Okay, and we're going to just push, 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 and push that pencil into the tooth of the paper. And um, we'll come back now and, and we'll start again. And what is wonderful about this is if you have all Saturday to draw, this is such a great way to lay the drawing on the paper. So now you can use so many different tools. You could use your eraser to draw so much. Okay, let's just blend this out. Like that. Let's put the other side of this. I guess it's a cloud. Yeah, I'm just drawing with that. It's very fun. And uh, so you see what I was doing there with the head? Is the head perfect? No. Uh, you, sometimes you just gotta, you don't see it right away. Oh, I need a razor blade to cut this eraser. Razor blade, razor blade, razor blade. I don't have a razor blade. I wanted to sharpen this 
eraser here. Hold on now. Okay. I'm taking a time out. I am going to go around the back of my computer where I cut the paper and get my razor blade. One second. One second. Got it. Okay, so the size of the drawing today is small. So from top to bottom, foot to hand is eight, seven and three quarters inches. It's tiny. Okay, now, mono zero eraser. Thanks to Dana. Dana, thank you. Let's get a scrap piece of paper here. And let's just shape the eraser with the blade. The downside of doing this is that you go through erasers a little bit quicker. But if I put that against the dark, it has a little bit of an edge to it. So now you can draw with this. So comments are coming in really um, fast here. Yep, thank you. Okay, so let's just... Her, this is lower. So now I'm just drawing with this eraser. Let's get this. It's very detailed on the edge, which I'm not going to get here today in a short period of time. I definitely am a little slow. There's no line over here. And her hair comes out. And her head should be smaller. So there's a lot of things that I see that are very wrong. And uh, it is what it is. I just have to fight through it and just not care a little bit that it's not gonna be perfect here today. But I'm going to try to push it with this little eraser so I show you how I would go about tweaking. And she has a pretty thick neck into the deltoid. So now we're just really working on the edge. Let's get the... Oh, I see. We've got this part of her cheekbone. Um, a little pressure here. Good. And this cheekbone goes, tilts up. Good. And um, let's get the brush. Comments are coming in really fast. Uh, okay. Now, um, I'm going to take this kneaded eraser. Kind of looks like a little creature. So this is the eye, that's the mouth, that's the arm, and that's the body. It's kind of cool. And who knows what I did with my pencil. I'm all over the place here today. So let's do this. I didn't know this was going to turn into like a little head drawing here today, but I, I, I got to be somewhat happy with this. I'm just tapping, tapping. Just trying to lighten that. It's a little too dark for my liking. Just tap. I want to lighten all of that up. A little bit more. And a little bit more on the chin. Rotate. Okay, cool. Good. That's good enough for now. Still is funky to me, but we're going to just kind of leave it. So I went a little too aggressive with that pencil stroke, and now I can't get it up. Let's use a different brush. 
This one's a little bit more forgiving. Let's let's move now. Let's 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 just give that head up for now. Shoulder, wing, angle of the wing. Let's get the edge of the wing. So make this edge. So that wing's coming out a little too far. Let's make the edge have some texture. S curve into the forearm. Let's just kind of flow out like that. And um, she has a, she does have a weird mouth. You know, I'm not making excuses up for myself. I didn't draw the face perfectly. But she does have a pretty funky mouth like that, all in shadow. And with that chin catching the light, it's definitely strange. Okay, now let's lighten and curve the cast shadow. Lighten this part of the breast a touch. Lighten this to the center of the breast and the side plane and a little bit of the belt. Now we can come on in over here with this thing. This is fun. Let's lighten that a little bit. A little bit on this side, inside of the knee. A fold and the forearm. Um, so the forearm's going up into that bicep just a touch. And we have a wonderful fold over here. And uh, okay, so now let's find the pencil. The title of this live stream should be Disorganized Artist. Disorganized Artist. This wing is not white. It's a value. That arm is not white. It's a value. I'm going to leave that for now. Let's push that into the paper so it matches the rest of the piece. Push, 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 push. How are we doing with comments? Merry Christmas, Danny Chen. Yeah, it's a pretty cool... I didn't even think about that. You know, I look at it. I, yeah, she's an angel, so maybe it's appropriate... Um, yeah, she does look younger. I agree with you. I, I didn't capture the likeness. So ego be damned. Ego be damned. This is really a great way to, to practice um, trying to push this. Uh, it's, it's just this is just practice, practice, practice right here. Get rid of some of those edges. Okay, let's go a little faster, Matt. Let's get this wing. And I'm looking at, I'm drawing negative space over here. Okay, so let's come on up and get that forearm. I'm going to keep that forearm kind of light. So negative space with the wing. And now we can come over here with our negative space with the eraser. So I'm doing a lot of drawing with the eraser because I created the base with the big brush. Okay, now this comes in, comes down, in down further than what I have, in and down further than what I have. So we can adjust that. Uh, where are we? Where are we? So this needs to come further down. Further down. Ah, this piece of fabric needs to be lighter. So I'm already getting, I should get ready to resharpen this, but let's just be a little bit of a brute. Lighten this. So we're doing a lot of fixing. So uh, some teachers call this pulling out the lights. And that's really what it is. I'm pulling out the lights. So it's a lot of looking. That's too light, but I'm okay with that. I'm just trying to set up for the next go through. So now let's go back to this wing. Go up go up into the wing. I think I have that wing a little too wide. And uh, let's just have fun with this texture that we're doing with the 
eraser. And we have some light hidden in that bottom piece of fabric. Ash the Cat, welcome. Kelly and Rob Hatfield, welcome. Greetings from Italy. My Italian mom is watching, probably. Uh, she's from Sunny Candro di Bari. She's probably laughing at me right now. Um, yeah, Marie, you're not alone. I spent 10 minutes trying to sharpen a pencil without breaking the tip. I'm glad I have several in reserve. Um, to practice ego, Dennis, yeah. So, you know, this is great when you do the live streams, um, how you screw up in front of everybody. Organized artist is a contradiction in terms. My first time find you live. Welcome, Jethro. That's some name. Jethro for Faria? That's cool. Disorganized artist. Awesome work. Thank you so much, Danny Chen. All right. Yeah, she's a good snow angel. I wouldn't want we had a big snowstorm here on Eastern Long Island. And uh I went out and you know, you start shoveling and uh it's ice. It it was ice and it was not fun at all. And I'm out of shape because that's all I do is sit in front of this computer. I don't move. And uh, yeah, so I have, just to kind of give you an idea, I have a class on Monday. Then Monday I do all of the video critiques for the website. So the class is from 8.30 to 10.30. It's a short class. It's going to be really fun. Uh, all the students are going to share with me their favorite artists. And I can't wait for that class because I usually discover... Uh, get to discover some really interesting uh, new artists that I never would see. And then Monday, uh, that's Monday. Tuesday is uh, my last class of the semester. Um, that's a four-hour class on Zoom. And then I um, have a hour and a half class for members of DTO, which is going to be a live drawing class with a model uh, on Zoom. So I'm really looking forward. So this is going to be a really busy week. So like I said, next week we're not going to have a live stream just because it's the day after Christmas and I don't want to burn myself out. Um, and that's that could happen very easily. Uh, I've been there before. And uh, especially doing the video critiques, you can burn out very quickly because you, you, don't, you don't really teach different things with the video critiques. You, it's the same fundamentals. That, that, that breast is too tall. Uh, it's the same stuff over and over and over again. You're not talking about 30 different things. You're talking about 10 different things. And when you talk about those 10 different things over and over and over again, you can tend to get like a little burned out. Um, so I definitely want to just take a little bit of time. So we can go a little sharper over here. L let's, let's just have fun and, and make this edge sharp. Just looking at the comments. Uh, this is so relaxing for you, Valentina. My mi uh, Not for me. <laughs> Uh, from Italy. Okay, well, what part of Italy? My mom um, still has her Italian accent, and um, she came over all by herself when she was 17 years old on this big ship. And uh, these people on the ship wanted to adopt her, but she's like, no, I'm going to see my dad. <laughs> it was a different time back then. I wasn't born then, so I, I'm guessing. Okay, so let's pull this out. How can I learn to see art so I can draw anything? I always, uh, that, that's a really general question. So what you need to do is find a teacher that you trust and like and like their personality. It could be anyone on YouTube, any teacher. There's so many good people on YouTube. It could be a teacher in your hometown and have them teach you their basic fundamental techniques. Um, shading, value structure, value matching, um, learning about light and shadow. Those, to me, are some of the fundamentals. Uh, just doing exercises of drawing negative space. Uh, negative space is how I learned how to draw in fifth grade. And a lot of teachers um, in the animation department do not like negative space because it's not really important for animators, but I do feel that negative space is important in general because it's something for an animator to glance out in two seconds. That's, this is going way too wide over here. I need to bring that in. So negative space, if you just practice drawing. So I'm looking at, this is negative space. I'm looking at this right now. I'm not looking at her. So just practice drawing abstract negative spaces. Now let's get this contour with a little bit of pizzazz on it. Cruise on down. We got to get troughs in this live stream. Oh, I just made that foot way too 
sticking out there. Okay, so I like the eraser crumb technique. That looks really good. <laughs> the, the mistake eraser crumb technique is really working for me today. Lose an edge. So that's the other thing with this. How do you loosen up a statue drawing? You lose edges. Oh, we're into this an hour. I got to get Truffs because somebody's visiting my house at 11 o'clock and Truffs is going to hear them and she's going to be barking. Oh my God, how am I going to do this? I, I don't know how I'm going to do this because I can't let her out of my office, but she's going to be barking. So I guess I'll just wait for her to bark and then I'll pick her up and share with everybody. Okay, so comments are coming in here. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. This is uh, this is struggling. Struggle time. Let's just... Uh, oh, here, Truffs is going to bark now. Nuts. Let me just grab Truffs because I got to... Hold on one second. Come here, Truffs. Okay, so do you see how her ears are up? Mm. See her ears are up? She knows somebody's over. Who's over, Truffs? Oh, her eyes are open. She's usually tired because she heard somebody at the door. And if I show you her back, her hair is up a little bit. Truffs, I know, I know. You you wanna you wanna run. You you gotta you gotta keep with your ritual here. Let's draw a little bit. You need to do a little bit of drawing on this, okay? Or else your fans are not gonna be happy. So let's um do a little shading, Truffs. Let's move closer. Let me move my mouth closer. <laughs> Shade a little bit over here. Let's do that cross hatching thing. You're on high alert, huh? You're kind of like a lion. You're not into it again this week. You're really disappointing everybody, Truffs. You're really disappointing everybody. I don't know if I can let you out of the studio. You're alert. You're a lion. Okay. <laughs> Okay, my wife is not going to be happy that I let her out of the studio, but um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so now let's take this thing and th this drawing has a lot of issues. And the reason why it has a lot of issues is because I need time. Um, I really need time to work on this, but this is, um, so now let, let's say, so it's 11 o'clock, right? We started the live stream at 10 o'clock. I would need to work on this for another three hours to make it look like her. Okay. There's a lot of issues with it so far. Um, but the basics are there. The basics are there. Uh, let me just do a, a little bit more for you all and then we'll call it a live stream. Before I work on it a little bit more, um, yeah, she's distracted. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So let let's let's go on top of this one more time. Okay, so art drawing. This isn't the pencil I was using. Uh, drawing is this thing of constantly starting over again. At least it is for me. So I draw and then I start over. I draw and then I start over. And what I call that is go-throughs. You go through the drawing the first time. It's not perfect, David. It would great to see you draw your sleeping dog from life one day. Yeah, um, that would be cool. My only issue is that that's over there and all this equipment is over here. Um, I have a drawing on the wall, if you bear with me, of, of my old dog. I'll get it off the wall one second. I actually did draw my old dog, hopefully this isn't dusty for the camera, um, sleeping, and that's what it looked like. So this is newsprint paper, and uh, you can see the newsprint paper is very yellow. Um, so there's, this was a pug, and his name was Rockwell, after um, Norman Rockwell. And he was just sleeping on the sofa, 
And uh, this was just a really fun live drawing that probably took about 15 minutes or so. And uh, it's the same. Pr so do you, do you see on this? I wish I can get the whole thing in the drawing. I don't want to start messing with the Zoom because then I'm going to screw everything up. Uh, but do you see this is more about line and it's not about tone. So those lines that I'm creating are showing texture. They're showing volume. The contour is showing texture. The contour is also on the leg showing a little bit of muscle and bone and all that fun stuff. So this is what a live drawing of troughs would, would look like. Now this is old newsprint. You can see over here that it's all ripped and, and it gets really buckly and uh, yeah. So let me put this aside. It doesn't have, it's not that bad. I don't have that much dust on it. I haven't dusted my office and if I was to show you the dust in my office, I really need to take the week in between Christmas and New Year's to regroup and do other things <laughs> like clean. Uh, you know, it's like that song from the Beatles, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. So you have to put the guitar down sometimes to do other things in life. But the problem for me and other artists is you do that and then you it takes you so hard to get back into the rhythm of drawing um, because you stop and then you lose this key word that every artist needs to be aware of and that word is called momentum and when I stop doing the live streams for a week and I do other things in life like actually dust my office uh, and other things um, then you could really lose your momentum. And that has happened to me over and over and over again. Let's just have fun with some light feathers. Um, yep. It's still snow on the ground. Arizona dusty. New Year's cleaning, yes. All right, so um, let me just work on this for five more minutes, and then we're going to call it a live stream. Any suggestions to work on the background? So yeah, what I would do if this was a long drawing is I would do the background tone. So I would start the background tone here, and then I'd, I'd feather it down into this side of the cloud. So the background tone would be the same as the gesture of the pose. So let's just... Add some clouds with some linear stuff. I don't want to make I don't want to match the value of the foot because it is kind of dark. And I don't want you to look down at her feet. Now, there's so many things I can do to this drawing to make it better. It's the word time. It's all about time. Let's get some folds here. Yeah, a lot of little things that I see. A lot of little things need to be tweaked. Let's wrap the fabric around. I'm just doing some line on top of the soft tone. And this line should roll into those folds of fabric that I've already put down there. Um, we can get these little bows or ribbon, whatever you want to call it. And some of this. So I'm just doing line on top of tone. In essence here, I'm ready to go to the next layer. The next layer would take me hours. So I'm not gonna do that on the live stream here today, but I hope that you got something from this statue uh, drawing. It needs a lot more work. Um, maybe what I can do is put this down and then come back to it in a later live stream. And that live stream would be all about how to finish a, a drawing like this. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Dion. Diana, hi. Three plus hour live stream. Yeah, I did that once and uh, it's a lot. Just because I'm on the I'm on the video a lot teaching, so it catches up to you sitting in this chair all day posture wise. 
So I'm just screwing around right now. This thing is pretty much done for this live stream here today. And uh, she has this bunched fabric in her hand. Let's curve this around. Let me resharpen this pencil. Let's push a little bit of the shadow shape so we have balance. Just winging this right now, no pun intended. I'm not getting the feathers in the right spot. And um, let's just kind of very lightly get this arm. Gesture. Bicep, no straight lines here. Oh, I see. You know, it's, I think it's best not to outline that at this stage in the game because, see, now I'm going into the next go-through. So I'm going to eliminate that outline. That outline just stiffened the whole piece up. So still learning here at the very end and learning that sometimes you want to leave information out. So for me, with drawing, as we close out this live stream here today, this is a drawing that needs many, many more hours and uh, sometimes it's, it's best not to outline things, okay? Sometimes it's best to leave outlines out. And especially on this arm, we just stiffen the whole thing up. So let me just have some fun with my eraser with the wing, and we'll finish this off right here um, with just playing with a little bit of texture. And let's, yep, let's lose the edge. So let's get some texture in here. Texture, texture, a little bit of texture over here on this fabric. I'm generalizing. I'm not really drawing what I see. I'm just winging it. There's a little bit of an edge there. And all of this, we just want to lose that edge. And I don't like that outline whatsoever there, so we're going to trash that. And now what we can do is push that. So it's a layering process, guys. Just pushing this back in. And maybe now we can just layer one more dark. One more dark. Hopefully the streaming quality was a little bit better today. We'll see afterwards. Just going a little bit darker over here. And I could get into this. I, I could really work on this all day. I think she's done for this live stream. Okay. Yeah, straight lines. Um, it's just you got to turn them into. We already Truffs visited. She she bolted out of the office. Mecca art. Um, thank you for so much, Matt. Have a great Christmas and a happy, healthy New Year. You too, Sandy. Let me just move my comments over here. Sandy, have a great uh, Christmas. I'm gonna do um, a live class for members of DTO on Tuesday at 3 p.m. It's going to be like an hour and a half class, an hour with the model. Kat, thank you. Kat, remember, look for the link. And if the link doesn't work, then look for the link at 3.05. So your time would be 12.05, I think, in Arizona. Aura, thank you so much for visiting here today. I just need more time on this uh, drawing, guys. It's just as, as good as I can get in that short period of time. Uh, Aura, thank you. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday in the Zoom class. Megana, Sony, thank you so much. I appreciate you joining, Dennis. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you at the Zoom. Um, uh, it's just get connecting more with people. Uh, that's why I do the live streams a little bit more. Danny, welcome. Marie, 
Uh, Danny, goodbye. I shouldn't say welcome. Marie, have a great week. Magdalena, my favorite name. The comments are going too fast. Uh, Michelle, Diana, I miss somebody's name. I really do appreciate it. Ileana, have a great, great uh, holiday, Ileana. Um, Mac- oh, God. <laughs> okay, David M., Andre, two hours difference. Okay, 1010. Merry Christmas, Marie. Dana, see you soon, Dana. Ellie, Joyce, Aurora, Wawan, that's a cool name. Phoenix, see you on, um, have a great Christmas if I don't see you on Tuesday. I appreciate that. I'm working on it. Some of your names are really hard to say. Helen, thank you so much. Ash the Cat, Susan, and Marie, yes. Mike, thank you so much for joining. Robert, DJ28, Merry Christmas. See you on Tuesday, Aurora. Don't get sick of me. Pace yourself. 47 Ronin, Cat Black, Adriano, Ahmad, Maria, Ash the Cat, Sweet Corn, Moises, Mendez, Merry Christmas, Aniket. That's a cool name. Bye, Phoenix. Adriano. All right. Have a good week, everybody. We'll see you soon. See you um, right after the New Year's, okay? Talk soon.